Alright, hello, this is a flat view, very insta-worthy and if you hear some random beeping noise slash food noise it's because I'm doing this in the awesome lighting that is in the staff room pantry uh, bringing you live content every single day Miss Lee, your new physics influencer in the house So anyway, this video, after all that nonsense uh, is going to talk to you about how to use the multimeter I'm not sure if I can invert this image but I'm pretty sure you're smart people and then you can just adjust accordingly Alright, so whenever you get a, a meter like this the first thing that you should think about is um, look at the places where you can put your input Okay, um, so if you look at all these different inputs, please make sure that you are plugged in in the correct place. Of course, during the exam, what we will do is we will seal off the part that you don't need, but just in case, like, okay. So if you see here, right, and on one end, there's a 10 ampere. You see this? If you watch my previous videos, you will know that 10 ampere is very high and we don't want to fry ourselves. So we technically don't use 10 amps, we will use this and this. Alright, and then you will notice that this one is black in color. So generally, as it's a good practice to, good practice to install the black lid here, which I will do a bit down here for you. So black and the red one. Okay, so once again, we are going to omit the 10 ampere and use this one because this one has um, volt, ohm, milliampere, all that good stuff. So we're putting it here. Okay, okay. all right. So once you have a meter like this, uh, this is very useful when you connect circuits. Oftentimes, when you're given a circuit, right, you might be given all sorts of circuits components and a lot of times, you might not get the experimental results you want because something is wrong lah, okay? So how do you check whether something is wrong? Number one, you make sure your meter is, your meter is healthy. So you turn it on. First thing we will measure is the battery, okay? So any kind of battery has a certain voltage. So please uh, look at this circle here, okay? This uh, entire part where you can toggle. So you will look at the place with volt. All right, so here, okay? And uh, I think I will adjust this to 20 volts okay I'm not sure they can see this is 20 volts okay um, everything here in this white band is volts they are just different different sensitivity okay the reading here shows the maximum value so for example for this one the maximum reading will be 200 millivolt maximum reading 2 volt maximum reading 20 volt and so on Okay. So since I'm measuring two batteries, which I know is 3 volt, I will choose 20 volts. Alright, so I'm going to connect it to a battery now. And uh, generally, it's good practice to have the red connect to the red. Uh. Red go in, black come out. That's the general idea. Okay, so when you have something like this, right, like a cell holder, sometimes there will be some soldering or rust in the contacts and that will affect your reading. So how do you make sure that it doesn't happen there? You always measure and check your instrument before you start your experiment. Okay, don't simply anyhow connect first. So like for example, this one, when I connect it this way, okay, red to red, black to black, I get a reading of uh, 2.89. Okay, again, I'm sorry if this is inverted. Recording on my very cheap Xiaomi phone. Hashtag MCKL salary. So... If you connect the wrong color because you're a rebel like this, okay, you connect like that, then you know what will happen or not. If you connect like this, then you will get the same number but with a negative sign. So the negative sign here simply means that the current is going into the wrong terminal. Okay, so what you need to do is you just flip the connection. So with this, I can conclude that right now my battery is working, my cell holder is working, and the meter is working. Okay? So, you might be thinking, what's the difference between connecting, okay, let me adjust the red back to red. What about this one? What is this? So you will notice that when you connect this way, right, you only have the effective voltage of one battery because I'm connecting here and here. Wait, that's sure. Okay, I'm connecting here and here. So this one and this one is just using this battery because the connection is like this. Okay? 
So if you want to include this battery, you put here long. But if you are not sure and you're like, how will I know how it's connected? Never mind. You can always use your multimeter to measure. Okay? So learn to use this to check your circuit. Okay, so I think this is fine. By the way, if you're going to ask me how do I know whether the unit is volt or milli volt or what, you you look at the number la. Okay, all of this is for learn to read. Okay, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, and you notice that it's a bit uh, jumping. The mid, the reading will jump because the connections are not tight. Okay, so I generally recommend that you start. But once you start the experiment, you do it very quickly. Okay, so that uh, and then you don't touch the connection anymore. So if you leave it on the table like this and you don't touch it, it should stay at two point eight eight. But if you keep touching it, uh, you keep fiddling with it, then the reading will change. Uh. But this one looks fairly stable and it's great. Actually, I think this is fine. Uh. I need to move near the camera already. Alright, just for you to see the label. Okay, so the battery is working. We can put it one side. Next thing to check is your connecting wires. Okay, so these connecting wires, there's two crocodile clamps. And sometimes the crocodile clamps, or maybe the soldering here will get rusty or will disconnect. You don't like go and open and check. Here's how you check. This is a wire. Theoretically, a wire should have zero resistance. So we can now move on to the next function of your uh, multimeter. Previously, we were measuring potential difference. Now we are going to measure uh, resistance. You see the ohm here? I mean, it's a bit dark. Let me press my camera. No, it's not going to work. Okay, so this one. Uh -huh. Okay, this one will be in ohm. So I'm going to adjust the knob until it's 2 mega okay notice that this one there is a 1 here whenever you see a 1 no matter where your setting is it means that the reading is too much for the meter to read error 2 in your Casio calculator when you take 1 divided by 0 cannot tabulate too big to read for example right if let's say I go back to 2 volt here and I measure my battery again like this you will notice that you can see this one jump to 1 again because this one can only measure maximum to 2 volt. Okay, maximum to 2 volt. Right, so when we connect this directly to the uh, connecting wire and I put resistance like this, of course the resistance is going to be maximum. What is connecting between these two connecting leads? Nothing. Air. Air has very large resistance. But what happens if I touch them? Wait. Uh. Okay, maybe cannot touch. But what happens if I hold them? Let me see. Hmm. Something the wrong. Okay, well. This is the nature of doing Labs. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if I were to hold on to it with my hands this way, you will notice that the reading, number one, is fluctuating, and number two, you can actually get a reading. So the reading of me, a human body, at my current hydration level and muscle mass is about 0.5 mega ohm. I am not a conductor. I am a lecturer. Joking, joking. Sometimes physics influencer. Okay, so if you connect this directly to a connecting lab, like this. Okay, I connect this one this way. This one is the wire. I connect it this way. We should get a reading of zero. Why zero? Because connecting wire, the gray connecting wire should not have any resistance. And then you notice again, if I fiddle a bit with the LEDs like this, play around with it a bit, this one can actually change. So it's important for you to, once you connect the circuit, you just let it go and let it stabilize. Lah. It should drop back to zero. But if you keep taking reading and you keep moving it around, then your graph not nice. Lor. Up to you. Lah. I can advise or net or influence. It's a weird year, guys. It's a weird year. All right. So you measure. So generally, right, this one can be used to measure potential difference, to measure your power supply. This one sorry, potential difference here to measure power supply. This one here to measure your current, okay? And here to measure your resistance, right? Uh, the other thing's not really usable at the moment. Uh, the one last thing that you should know 
you see this H hold button here if you press H right um, yeah, let me adjust so if you press H it's a bit like I want to take the reading now so I freeze I freeze the screen okay so I'm just gonna put it back to the battery make sure you can see it in the screen so if I connect it this way I get a reading of about 3 volt 2.9 Okay, so you could be asking me what's the difference between the 20 volt and the 2000 volt, then I will tell you decimal point low, sensitivity. Okay, so you can see this sensitivity is reading the volt to two decimal point. This one will read volts to one decimal point, but it's the same one. Lah. So generally during the exam or during the experiment, we will tell you, we will tell you what setting to use. Lah. Okay. And as you can see, it's not very stable. So let's say you don't want it to jump around, you can press hold. Okay. The H is here. H for hold. Now if you don't unhold this and you continue to take your reading, your reading will forever be 3.31. Then cannot allow your experiment fail already. So make sure you unhold it or unfreeze it so that you can get a proper reading lah when necessary okay so i think this one is okay it looks a bit wonky now remember just now we measure 2.89 now 3.3 la 2.91 la all this is a soldering problem lah okay so generally once we set up the experiment walk away okay so same thing generally if you have other circuit components like for example you have a bunch of resistors here or let's say you have a switch you should always ask yourself what's the purpose of these things and how should they behave when being measured. For example, if I want to measure this 3.3 kilo ohm resistor, I'm going to kilo, 3.3 kilo. So I can deal with 20k. Um, and uh, if I connect, well, this one quite loose, but I will try. So if I connect both of this, I should get 3.3. 3.3. How do you how, how do I know that this is kilo? Look at the knob. Okay, this is 3.3, and where is the knob directed towards? You can see uh, find that green a bit hard to see, huh? But you can see the word K here. Okay, lah, when you touch this during the lab, you will get it. Alright, so please learn to read label. Don't just blindly read the number, but never include the prefix from here. Okay, we are not going to help you during the exam when this happened. You should know by now. Check the prefix. Okay. Alright, so switch. Uh. Switch layer, if it's closed like this, the resistance should be close to zero. I hope for zero. Go down some more. Okay, not more. Excuse me. Well, um, last switch is sometimes a bit finicky. And then when you release, it should go to maximum. Okay? So repeat again. Uh, when you close the switch, it should be close to zero. Release, it should be maximum. Now actually, uh, even this 0 0.04 kilo, Like you see, uh, the resistance of this switch is fluctuating a lot. Uh. Generally, hang on, but this will be on record. You decide uh, whether you want to use the switch or not. But CIE will recommend you use the switch. Uh. But you know, uh, sometimes you want a more stable reading. Uh, so you know what to do. Uh. Okay, so this is the first uh, overview video about the uh, circuits. Mainly, how to use the multimeter to help you check all your circuit components. For example, battery. First thing, check these two. If the reading is not what you expect, it might not be this fault, you know. It might be the meter is spoiled. So what to do? Ah? Raise your hand oh, now. Uh, COVID-19, you cannot go and go to your friend's table and take their one to check. Ma. Raise your hand, I'll come and help you or the lecturer should come and help you. Okay, so check these two. Make sure these two is working. That is why you can use already. 
then use this because you are sure that this one will work check all the connecting wire if we give you eight connecting wire you check all the connecting wire resistance should be zero okay so you turn the knob to resistance uh, to be zero okay if we give you all this other you also check law maybe got light bulb maybe got a wire whatever uh, you will check so once you check everything you are secure then you connect after you connect i would suggest you do a second round of checking this is to make sure that all the connecting portion like this one connect here this one connect here all of these are properly okay lah like nothing happened unexpectedly then uh, god willing if all the stars align all your points will align and you will get a beautiful best fit line okay so that's all for today i will make another video regarding potential meter for you very soon take care bye bye